How would you like to improve your Amazon sourcing skills with one simple method? Today, I'm going to show you how. What's up, YouTube, and welcome to my channel, Ask Jimmy Smith. I've seen hundreds of people have success using this program that I'm about to show you, and so I'm gonna go through a specific example of just one way to improve your arbitrage or wholesale sourcing skills. Today's video is on a specific way to use the Keepa Advanced Data Product Finder. So if you've been around my content for any length of time, you know that I'm a huge promoter of the importance of using Keepa graphs in your business to make the right purchasing decisions. Well, one of the main things that many people don't utilize are Keepa's advanced features, which are already included in a Keepa subscription. I've actually done an overview video on my channel on the Data Product Finder before, but today I'm going to give you this one specific tip on how to use it to help you get your sourcing to the next level. Now, before before I get into it, I do have a free Keepa Graph training guide at my website at askjimmysmith.com forward slash Keepa guide. All the links are in the description below. So if you're interested in the 17 page booklet, you can go there. But also if you're interested in the many other ways to utilize the Keepa data product finder, I recommend checking out the proven Amazon course, which you can get at bit.ly forward slash pack course. That's P-A-C-C-O-U-R-S-E. Again, the link is in the description. Since there are tons of options with the advanced to keep a data product finder tool that I'm not going over on my YouTube channel. I just want to refer you to that course if you're interested in the many other ways to use this. So let's jump right into the demo. Okay, so now you can see that I've got the Keepa Data Product Finder pulled up on my screen. Now you get there by going to Keepa and then you can click on data right here. And then after you click on data, there's premium data access that you can use. You can also see there's a bunch of other options like the product viewer and best sellers, top seller list, category trees, et cetera. So, but the one we're gonna get to is the premium data access or the product finders that's known right here in the top left. And if you click on premium data access, you can see there are tons of different options of things that you can input to get specific results from the Keepa data on uh, particular ASINs that you're looking for. Let's say that you have a specific sales rank criteria that you wanna utilize, or you have a specific pricing criteria that you wanna find. All of these things you can input and get data back from Keepa for these products that actually meet those standards and those metrics. And so I'm gonna show you in just a minute the one thing that I've seen help a lot of sellers recently uh, that I just want to make available to everybody because it's a very simple thing to add into this. But before we get to that, I want to show you just some basic stuff that you can put in here so that you know how to use the data product finder if you've never seen it before. Now, sales rank, I usually like to look at averages, so 90 day averages. For the most part, if you've watched my training, you know that I don't care too much about the sales rank of a product just because I have seen a lot of products sell very well with no sales rank in the past. So it can be fun to look for products with no sales rank. But if I were to zoom in here and we can kind of that way you can see it a little bit better on the screen, you can see here there's a 90 day average. And so I'm just going to put in an average sales rank between these two numbers. So I'm going to go with, let's just say 25,000 up to go with 250,000. Now, uh, whenever I do that, you can see now there's 25 million products that meet a 90 day average sales rank of 25,000 to 250,000. So obviously that's too many products to go to. Ideally, we'd want to get it to less than 500 if possible. And so we're going to look at a bunch of different items here. So buy box, uh, you can go with buy box pricing. Uh, I'll probably just say I want to see prices from let's go with $12 up to $50. Okay. And let's see what it brings it down to. So I brought it from, the, I think it was 25 million before down to 12 million products. And then I don't want Amazon to be on here. So I'm going to just put out of stock and we can make sure that Amazon's not currently on the listing. Additionally, we can add in other things like the third party FBA price, but I care more about the buy box price. So I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to go past some of these other options so that we can get to what I wanted to show you which is actually in this section where there's title, brand, and more. Now you can actually go in here and put the brand right there is one of a specific brand. So you could put in multiple brands if you wanted to source based off of the actual brand data information on an Amazon listing. However, I find that it may be best to put the brand in the title field because then it's going to be looking for that word within the title. So if I hover over this, 
It says title of the product. Let me zoom in. It works on a keyword basis, which means the product's title must contain the specified keywords, which are to be separated by a white space. The search is case insensitive. Partial keyword matches are not supported. So for example, digital camera Canon, title must can, or the title must contain all three of those keywords in any order or position. So if you put digital camera in quotes, uh, the title must contain the word digital camera and Canon. And then there's a negative digital camera, which means the title must not contain those words digital and must contain camera. So there's a lot of things you can do with this. You can really play around with it. But what I wanted to do is just say, all right, let's say I want those particular fields filled out for sales rank, for the pricing information, the fact that Amazon's not currently on the product. And let's say I'm looking at a product in the store or online that's Altoids, right? Maybe I am on Walmart's website. I just looked this up. There's tons of different Altoid options. By the way, if you are sourcing from Walmart, you want to make sure that you select that it is only from Walmart that you're purchasing products from because if you purchase from pro sellers or marketplace sellers, Amazon will not accept your receipts if you were to get an IP issue or an account health issue. So you want to come down here and select Walmart so you're sourcing from the right particular seller. So that way it's a legitimate product, not counterfeit. Amazon will accept it. But anyway, if we're looking at the Altoids brand on Walmart. You can go back here to the product finder and put in the title Altoids. Whenever I do that, you can see it pulls up products. I clicked enter, it pulled up products. Let me go back to the advanced filter so we can see that actually brought it from 10 million products down to 39 products that are between these average sales ranks, these average prices, and have the word Altoids within that title. Now you could always take off the S and see if that produces different results, maybe Altoid. There's only one product that has Altoid. Let's go back with Altoids there, and it pulls it back up to 39. Now, if you wanted to continue filtering it down, let's say the brand had a thousand uh, different results, you could go through that, or you could continue to add in offer counts, all kinds of stuff to make sure that uh, Amazon is not on the product at all, or never has been on the product at all. There's a lot of different data points that you can really play around with to get the exact results that you want. But let's take a look at this and click on Find products. So now that we have 39 products, it's very manageable. We can see that the current sales ranks are good, but we, we care about the 90 day sales rank that it falls between those options that I had already given into it for 25,000 up to 250. There's a couple other things too. You can look at drops, the sales rank drops. So this means that it is selling quite a bit. And then you can also, if we scroll over, we can look at the new third party pricing and a bunch of different things from ratings, reviews, etc. But I would most likely come through here and look Look for different listings, either based off the packaging or just click on each and every one to see if any of them are good to sell. So let's just start with the first one. If I open this up, actually, this is going to pull up the Keepa chart. So I don't care right now about the Keepa chart. Let's go open up the Amazon page. If I go to the Amazon page here, you can see this is actually a one count pack of 12. Now, more than likely, this wintergreen pack of 12 uh, isn't going to be sold as a 12 pack on Walmart. We would have to buy individual cans. Uh, let's see, they do have one actually. This is a pack of six though for uh, $33.48. And that's actually what they're selling this for. So that's kind of interesting. This is 12 pack and this is for a six pack. Usually Walmart and Amazon would have the same prices there. But what I would rather do instead of going with some of these particular products is I want to look for something that's a little bit more, this is potential for being more of uh, an Amazon uh, multiple seller type situation. So if I click onto this listing, you can see this looks more like a homemade listing. It's a three pack. Might not be selling at $19.95 currently. This is FBM. Uh, and if I were to scroll down here, this is a variation product. You can see that by the variations there. You can see the variations up here. So it may not actually sell well. The sales rank is deceptive. It could uh, pass for all the entire uh, variations themselves. Uh, I'd like to look at the year to see how it did. And you can see it probably sells more at this clip about one every you know month or so. So I potentially would pass on that. Um, I've done a whole video on YouTube about analyzing variations using Keepa. So highly recommend checking that out if you need some help for how to do that if you're dealing with variations. Let's just say that this was good. The Altoids, the Peppermint ones, they've got them. They're 248 a tin on walmart.com. You may be able to find them cheaper elsewhere. They are 1.76 ounces uh, and so are these. So this would be roughly, uh, let's see, it was 278, I believe. Yep, they're 248. So you could do uh, 248 uh, times three and it's 744. So if you were to send this in and it sells, you would make $6.27 or 84 
5% uh, ROI. Again, this is a variation. I'm not saying that it is a good one to go buy, but this is what we're looking for using the Keep a Data Product Finder. The other thing that you could do, if I go back to the advanced filter here, because we're looking at this particular brand and we wanna make sure that there aren't any uh, private label products or exclusive wholesale products, we can look for the amount of sellers. Now I have to find that. Okay, it's down here underneath offer counts. Uh, you can see new offer counts. If I hover over that, it says count of marketplace merchants selling a product as new. And so that's what I care. And I'm actually going to look at the current. You could look at average if you wanted, but I'm going to say I want to see anything from three sellers up to 10. I don't want to see more than 10 sellers. So it brought our 39 products down to 10 products. If I just put I wanted a minimum of three, I could do that as well, and it would bring it to 15. But I don't want to have too much competition um, it, as my search is currently going. So let's just take a look at these 10 products. Click find products. And these are the ones that meet the... Um, the requirements that I put in there. Now, this was one we already looked at, this three pack here. There's also this uh, 12 containers per box. So we couldn't find that at a profitable price, at least not from Walmart. Let's take a look at this one and we can go to the Amazon listing here. There, all right. You can see that this is also a variation. They're selling this three pack for 1096. That is in the small and light program. Again, this, if Amazon has it, would be $2.48. Let's see, they do. So if I do 248 times three in that, it's 744. So we're not making money at this current price. However, if you could find them for a dollar a tin or $2 a tin, um, actually $2 a tin probably wouldn't make sense, but if you could get them a dollar a tin, it might make much more sense to list these products on to uh, Amazon if the variation makes sense. Again, utilizing the other video that I've already done for evaluating variations. See if this remembers, there we go. So we can continue to look at other options. There's a six pack that I could open up here. 3250 for the six pack. Again, another variation, but if I did uh, 248 times six, it gives us $9.49 of a net profit, 64% ROI. It's a good rank in grocery. Not too many sellers going on, so it might not be selling too often. Again, it might be a slower one, or there might be a little bit of a risk. If you were to test something that has this type of a sales rank, I would probably do it cautiously and get one or two. But anyway, you can utilize this for anything that you want. So let's say you could continue going through all of these. Let's go back to the advanced filter. Um, and I scroll down to that brand section right here for the title. If I'm on Walmart and I want to go to a particular brand, let me just go to departments and then we can go to, let's just say pets and uh, dog supplies. And let's see what dog supplies come up. Let's look for some of the smaller ones. We could try, okay, we could do only at Walmart products. So Ol Roy, we could come back to product finder and put it in here, O-L-R-O-Y and see if that pulls anything. You can see it actually pulls nine products. So let's click on find. These nine products are Ol Roy. They all meet the uh, requirements of the same sales rank, the same amount of sellers, etc. So you can see that if I click on this, the buy or the Kipo chart looks fairly good for this particular product. If I go to Amazon, uh, we can see if this is any good. So this is $21.35 for two of these uh, chicken and rawhide dumbbell dog treats. Let's see if I can do this. So I'm just gonna search for this particular product on Walmart. Okay, so this pulls up, it's out of stock currently, but maybe your current um, Walmart has this product. Who knows? You might be able to find it somewhere, but at $5.74 a piece, if you could find it locally, let's see if you make any money, $5.74 times two, you'd make $1.60 or 14% ROI. It's not the best. Maybe it was clearanced out. Maybe that's why here on walmart.com, it's out of stock because they clearanced it. Who knows? But you get the gist, right? You can go to the product finder, put in the basics of the things uh, that you want to, from a um, sales rank, pricing, seller standpoint, come down to the second section, put in in the text field, the title and the brand specifically that you'd like that to be within the title because usually the brand is in there. Sometimes the brands can be wrong. That's why I don't use the brand section as much, but I like to use the title section to put the brand in there to get the results that I want. So if you're looking at particular brands on Walmart, on Target, on any other store or site, or even if you have pictures from retail arbitrage that you bring home, you've got a whole aisle of, I don't know, icebreakers type products. You got a whole aisle of toothpaste. You can use this to pull back results of particular types of listings that you want to see for that brand. 
Now, hopefully this method is one that gives you the training that you need to get even better results when doing your online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, or wholesale, whatever it might be. I believe it's a huge help. I've seen a lot of success from people utilizing the Keep a Data Product Finder in this way. The Product Finder tool is extremely powerful. And so I highly recommend playing around with the tool to grow your business. There's so many data points. That's why in my prior video, I just did an overview, a demo of it. There's so many data points in here. Just play around and see what results you get. Spend 5, 10, 15, 20 hours just seeing what you can pull back, seeing the products that you can find. Now, if you would like my free Keepa graph training guide, I don't go over the product finder. I just go over the, the graphs. It's a 17 page guide. You can head to my website at askjimmysmith.com forward slash Keepa guide. Or if you're interested in a course that goes through the data product finder in much more detail, check out the proven Amazon course at bit.ly forward slash pack course. That's P-A-C-C-O-U-R-S-E. All the links that I've mentioned are in the description. So you can check that out there. Let me know your questions and thoughts in the comments section of this video. Anything else that you'd like me to cover on this channel. I hope that this video helped you and blessed you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day and a blessed rest of your week.